And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to my review of Hawaii. You say, is this a new game? Not especially. Is this the first time you reviewed it? Not necessarily, actually. Hawaii is a game I reviewed several years ago in a fairly infamous review uh, where I kind of smashed up on the game. I always felt a little guilty over that, and I had a chance to pick this up in a Jack Bass Memorial Fund auction lately, and I wanted to give the game another look, what some might say, a fairer look at the game, and see what I thought of it now. Hawaii is a resource management game based in Hawaii, and you're sending your chief around to go and build up your villages to get the most points. Definitely a game where you get a lot of points. Here's... Players are going to be scoring points over the course of the game, which are going to be kept track on this point scoring track around the outside of the board. You're also going to be scoring points for your villages here. Some of the tiles that you put in a village will give you points. So for example, this one here is going to give you points. However, as the game progresses, you're going to need to build these little tiki guys here. And at the end of the game, the farthest tiki guy that you have over, only villages that have reached to that guy um, are going to score points. So if, for example, this is my first village, this is my second village, and my third village, well, you can't have the same building in each one, in the same village, uh, does this, my first and my third villages are going to score points. This one didn't pass him, so they're not going to score points. So you, have, you can have up to five villages. There's also ways to put these tokens out like this, and these will score points, 5, 5, 10, 10, 15 at the end of the game. But again, only if that particular village has reached where the tiki's are. Players are going to be doing all this with three resources, seashells, feet, and fruit. And fruit is basically wild. It can act as feet or shells. But you can only ever spend one resource. You can't spend five feet and one fruit. No, you can spend six feet or you can spend three fruit. Um, feet are used mostly to move around the island. Each player is going to have their chief, and on your turn, you can spend one foot to stay where you are. You can spend multiple feet to move through the isle tiles. You always start from the beach, you go like here or to here. So one, two, three, four. That would cost me four feet. If I just want to return to the beach, that's a free action. And when you return to the beach, you can take an action here, basically ending your turn or you can go to one of these islands, pay a certain amount of feet, which will give you points and the bonus on this island here. If you go out to these spots, you're going to have to go to a spot that has a token. Now, I haven't put out the tokens yet because I want to show you at the beginning of every round, players are going to be reaching into a bag and putting tokens on the board in the various spots. So for example, if I was putting tokens in this spot here, I'm going to draw on the bag, and this is a five, and then I draw another one, on the four, and I put a four. Then I'm going to draw a token for this spot here. This is a five. I add these together. Five plus four plus five is 14. That's higher than 12. So this token turns into a fish and is placed down in the lake. If I go over here, the first token is a six. I pull out the second token, which is a three. 6 plus 3 is 9. That is not higher than the 9. So the 3 goes on top of the 6. So you'll be drawing these tokens out like this. These tokens are important for several reasons. Um, and uh, you, as the game progresses, when you go to a spot, if I want to buy the tiles there, I have to pay the cost that's on one of these tokens here. So for example, if I want to buy one of these tiles here, I would spend 4. Or you can only spend double that. I could spend 8 and take two of the tiles. In some of the spots on the board, like for example, let's say there was a token here on the one below it, I could pay four to take this tile, which is gonna give me one, two, th one, three, six, or 10 points, depending how many fruit tiles are in the same village, or I could pay double that cost, eight, flip the tile over, and take the second level. 
same points, but it also gives me a free resource every round. The different tiles are going to do various things. For example, these tiles here, each round are going to give you more shells and more feet. There are fruit tiles up here, which are going to give fruit. There are boats, which you need to tap a boat or rotate a boat when you're going to these islands to use. You have to use feet and boats to get to these islands to get the bonuses that are on them. Some you've already seen, the tiki's and the other tiles will give you points. And there's just various things that you can buy. Most of them are set. These happen to be random and there'll be different gods that you can put in your village, which will give you more points at the end of the game. There's also going to be tiles down here, leftover tiles that players can get. Uh, when you basically finish your turn, you'll go here picking your turn order for the next round, and you'll also get these tiles. Each tile that you've collected over the course of a round, so let's say in round one, I've collected a five and a three, and I also went to the fishing area and got one fish, so I've gotten nine. There's a tile here for each round. If players have gotten at least this number worth of tokens, then they will score in here. Whoever gets the highest amount of tokens gets eight, then five, then two points. And then before you go into the second round, everyone's gonna, or before you go into this round, everyone's gonna get 10 shells and six fish. Each round, you're gonna get less shells and less, and less feet. However, you can get more from the different islands that you have. And these numbers get harder to attain, but the number of victory points they give also goes up dramatically. And that's kind of how the game is going to be. The game's going to be getting victory points from these, or when you go to these spots, you'll get victory points from going to the islands. And there are a few other ways to get victory points over the course of the game. For example, if you have this one, every time you take a turtle shell token that shows, uh, that has the cross weapons on it, you're going to get an extra victory point or an extra two victory point. And then there's going to be a lot of victory points given out at the end of the game based on your villages and tiki, like I mentioned earlier. There are five rounds of the game. After the fifth round, whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. So the components for the game are really nice. I really like how this island fits together. These are randomly placed out there, so this village is going to be different every game. These are cool components, the feet and the shells and the fruits. The, my only complaints here is it's very easy to tell one foot from a five foot. But the one fruit and the, th and the five fruits are not quite as easy, and the one and the five shells also are similar. I wish it was a little easier to tell which ones were five, but they are pretty neat. The artwork on everything, and as you build up your village, that looks pretty cool. Each player also has a shield, a pretty sturdy shield, where you keep your resources, your feet, shells, and fruit. Overall, the components for this game are quite well done. <laughs> Okay, so I remember specifically when I first reviewed this, I compared the game to a spreadsheet. I think that's still a legitimate thing. The game definitely feels like a spreadsheet, especially as you're filling in your little columns or your villages trying to get the right tiles and get points. The game is all about getting points during the game and then getting points at the end. Both are valid strategies, but you cannot ignore one, I think. I think maybe you could go all points during the game uh, but yeah, there, there's, there's many different ways to get points over the course of this game, and every game is going to be very different based on the randomization of the initial tiles. Now, there are some things I'm not a huge fan of in this game. One for sure is how you put out those seashell tokens. I find that little, not only is it fiddly, you have to do it every turn, put out these tokens. It's also... Um, adds a good deal of randomness, which I'm not real keen on because sometimes you might have a specific strategy. Maybe you're trying to get fruit out or whatever, and the tiles that get put there, either A, there's not there's two instead of three tiles, and they're very expensive tiles, and it just kind of shakes up your strategy. And you might have a very specific strategy, and it's really hard to course correct in the middle of a game or middle of a round. And so that randomness throws me off a bit. And those two things, honestly, when I put them together, keep me from really liking it. But I do like it more than I used to, that's for sure. I do like the idea. I think it's fun to build up the five different villages. I think it's interesting to use the currency of feet to move around and the seashells to buy things. I like the idea of buying a single tile or flipping it over and paying double for it, which sounds amazing. But when you pay double for something, your seashell tile doesn't become worth more. So you might be losing out on those critical victory points at the end of each round. 
This game does definitely offer a good deal of variety. Like I said, the village is going to be different every time. The god tiles that are going to be at the top are different. The island tiles that will come out that you can send people out to get bonuses, they'll be different. And you got to kind of go with the flow. I'll say Hawaii is much more tactical than it is strategic. And if you say, Tom, let's play Hawaii, you could probably snag me. But because of the spreadsheet nature of the game, because of the, the uh, kind of randomness of those seashell tiles, and I, I think some, and also this a little bit of fiddliness with the coming back and rotating boats to go out to downs, I feel like the game is just doesn't flow for me as well as I would like it to. Most of the people I played it with have enjoyed it, though, and I heard that the online experience of it is very good. So while this is not my cup of tea for sure, it is one I know that a lot of people would like. And so, I, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I love this game now, but I do think that I like it more than I used to. I think my tastes of a gamer certainly have changed. And I think this is one that you, you might want to hunt down and find. It's not, you know, a new hotness game. But this game is certainly going to appeal to a lot of people. Definitely one to think about, Hawaii. Dice Tower Judgment, not my style, but I know a lot of people will like it.